Okay, so if this is your first night with us, don't worry that we're on lesson seven. Uh, it's, it's okay. There's stuff that you'll be able to hear tonight that you'll be able to utilize in your recovery. And we, every year we go through all the lessons, so there'll be an opportunity to, to dig deep um, in, into, the, into the first six later again. So we're at principle four, which says, openly examine and confess my hurts, hangups, and habits to myself, to God, and to someone I trust. And the biblical comparison for that is, happy are the pure in heart, Matthew 5, 8. Step four, we made a searching and fearless, honest inventory of ourselves. And then Lamentations 3.40 says, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. So last month we spent a lot of time in principle three, which is probably the most important principle of all. It's the principle that says um, that I'm willing to commit all my life and will to Christ's care and control and that I make a conscious commitment to be able to do that. And in pretty much every lesson and every principle, we'll just be mindful that that's the most important thing, that we be in daily relationship with Jesus. Everything else is secondary to that thing. So at, at this place uh, in our journey, we find out that the road of recovery is not meant to be walked alone, right? We can only do recovery in community, right? We need each other. Right? Without each other, this won't work. But the most important relationship is with Jesus. Uh, the next most important relationship is our relationship with our Celebrate Recovery Group and our church family. It's super important that you have a church family that you spend time with, that you study God's Word with. If you don't have a church family, right, we would be happy for you to visit us here. Or there's multiple churches represented on our leadership team. Grab anybody with a badge. We'd love for you to come to church with us. And then the third... Uh, relationship that's super important to your recovery is going to be your sponsor and accountability partners. Your sponsor and accountability partners. Now, it, it can be hard, right, to find somebody, but just be patient, right? God already has somebody in mind for you. He will make that obvious as you just participate in your recovery. As you go to small groups, you'll hear stories from people that will resonate with you. It will become obvious who those people should be. And we'll talk about this a little more in just a minute. So if I was going to sum up principle four and step four in one word, I would say it's all about honesty. This principle is about learning how to be honest with myself, with God, and with all of you, right? Which might sound easy, but it's not really easy, right? I, the easiest person to lie to is myself. I can convince myself of anything, and I have right, before, and, and so can you. So we want to practice learning how to be completely transparent and completely honest so we can come clean, so we can put our past behind us and move forward into the new life that God has planned for us. In Proverbs fifteen fourteen, it says, a wise person is hungry for truth while the fool feeds on the trash. Most of us, when we got here, right, we, we had all kinds of trash. We were carrying all kinds of baggage. But as we work through the steps and principles of recovery, we get to leave that behind. As we're more honest, there's less trash to carry. Another way to describe a sponsor or accountability partner uh, would be someone who's a mentor or a coach. Someone who's further along in their recovery journey than you are. So some of you are sitting here thinking, I don't need that. I don't need somebody else telling me what to do. I don't, I'm good. I got this. Let me just warn you that that's risky, right? So the first time I got into recovery, I, I went to AA, and I was, I was about 21. And I got to the part where it said, a God of my own understanding. And I was like, yes, I finally get to be God. It did not work out so well, right? So I, when I relapsed, I stayed in relapse for 18 more years, and it's pretty much a miracle that I'm alive today. Jesus is the only higher power that's going to have, be able to do transformation in your life, and it's going to be important that you have a sponsor who can guide you into a relationship with Jesus. So we're going to start by answering five important questions. Five important questions. So the first one, which is going to be your fill-in, is why do I need a sponsor or an accountability partner? Why do I need that? Well, there's three reasons. So the first one, 
uh, we find in Proverbs 27, 17, which says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We need each other to keep ourselves honest. And then Ecclesi- uh, oh, and then the second reason is having a sponsor or accountability partner is biblical. It talks about it here in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, where it says two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone, there's no one to help him. Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. And I know that this is true. I know that when I have felt tempted and when I've reached out to my sponsor, he's been able to talk with me and pray with me and I haven't had to make that bad choice, whatever it was. It's when I isolate myself and I don't pick up the phone or I don't reach out that I wind up in trouble because the enemy is bigger and stronger and smarter than me by myself. I need someone else, right, to fight these battles with me, and so do you. Having a sponsor or accountability partner is a key part of your recovery, a key part. And it is, I mean, I wish there was another way I could say key part. Uh, I, I would say, I guess, a priority. It's essential. It's necessary. I would say mandatory, but, you know, it's obviously not mandatory. This is a program of choice. So so recovery has basically four key elements to be successful. I think we all want to be successful, right? And this is built on the foundation of Jesus. We want to maintain honesty. We want to maintain honesty every day. And I can just assure you the quicker that you are honest, the easier it is to be honest. Right? I've had situations where... Um, like, for example, I've had situations, one of my accountability partners is my pastor. And I made a decision that I knew was the wrong decision. I should have called him before. I didn't do that. And then once I made the wrong decision, I was like, well, he's not going to know. He's not going to find out. Why do I need to tell him? I don't want to tell him, right? I'm Jonathan. I got nine years in recovery. I'm the ministry leader. It's going to be okay. Yeah, it's not going to be okay. And so I made an appointment with him, and I went in and I met with him, and I said, hey, I made, I made a mistake, and I need to confess that to you, and I need to see, you know, what you think about that. He was very gracious to me, right? And, and as soon as I talked to him about it, I was like, wow, why didn't I just talk to him before? Why wasn't I just honest sooner, right? It's, it takes practice. No matter how long you're in recovery, Practicing honesty is a practice, and we get better at it over time. The second key element is making attendance at recovery meetings a priority, right? So usually what I say at this time is I say you have to put as much energy into your recovery as you did into your addiction. I don't know about you guys, but when I was in addiction, every waking moment, right, was about feeding that addiction. And so now, right, every waking moment, I'm trying to figure out what is God's will in my life and how do I surrender to that will, right? How do I, how do I walk out my recovery in a successful way? And I don't just come here, right? I go to other recovery meetings because here I'm pretty busy. I don't really, I don't really get the focus on my own things, but uh, so I go to other recovery meetings and I would encourage you to do that as well. Don't stop coming here. Monday night's mandatory, just saying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah where's nicole i need nicole right now we're fun right nicole she's not here okay uh where are you yeah see we're monday night's mandatory right there you go okay uh the third key element is maintaining your spiritual program with jesus and how do we do that how do we maintain a spiritual program with jesus we spend time in his word every day we spend time in prayer every day and praying is not just talking to god it's being silent and listening to god and we meditate on his word right where we give him that space to speak to us through his holy spirit 
So later when we get to principle seven, we'll dig really deep into that idea, but I don't want you to wait till principle seven. I want you to start reading your Bibles and praying and meditating on God's word tonight and then continue tomorrow, right? It's the thing that keeps me grounded and, and on the path that God wants me to be on. Uh, the fourth key element uh, to a successful program is getting involved in service. As soon as we shift our focus from a selfish focus to a service focus, serving God, then uh, all, of our problem, all of our problems seem to be smaller and not quite as significant. Right? If, you're, if you find yourself in a place where you're feeling bad, find somebody to serve. It will help. It will shift the way that you think. John Baker, the founder of Celebrate Recovery, used to say, service is love in work clothes. Service is love in work clothes. Having a sponsor, accountability partner is the best guard against relapse. They're going to provide you feedback. They're going to give you encouragement. The, the number one thing a sponsor is going to do for you is encourage you. They're going to be amazing in your life. They're going to be a cheerleader for you. They're also going to have hard conversations with you. If you're procrastinating, they'll encourage you not to do that. If you're going too fast, they'll encourage you to slow down. If, um, if you're most probably facing denial of some kind, they'll help you penetrate that denial and actually see the light of God's truth. In Ecclesiastes 7, 5, it says this, it's better to be criticized by a wise man than to be praised by a fool. But the problem is that most of us would rather be ruined by praise than saved by criticism. Right? Do I have to raise my hand on that one? Without exception, everybody in this room needs a sponsor and accountability partner. You need an encouragement team if you're going to be able to navigate the challenges of life. Okay, so what are the qualities of a sponsor? In Proverbs, wait, that didn't happen. Oh, I don't have a slide for Proverbs. I'll just read it to you. In Proverbs 20, verse 5, it says, Though good advice lies deep within a counselor's heart, the wise man will draw it out. Your sponsor is going to be able to help you see things that you don't see because they've already been there and done that. The thing I love so much about Celebrate Recovery is it's not, it's not, um, it's not encouragement from headspace. It's not encouragement because I read a book and I know some stuff. It's encouragement because I lived it. So I know that it's true. And when I share it with you, I'm sharing it to you from experience, not from just head knowledge. So uh, the first thing that's important in the quality of a sponsor is, does his walk match his talk? Right? If I tell you that I'm a really nice person, but then you come to my house and I'm kicking my dog, right? it's pretty obvious I'm not a nice person. Um, does a person's walk match their talk? Because if, if, if when you come to my house, if I'm different there than I am here, that should be a giant red flag to you. Right? It should be that way with anyone you spend your time with. However they are here on Monday nights should be the way they are all the time that you're with them. Does their walk match their talk? Do they have a growing relationship with Jesus Christ? And how do you know that? Well, you'll know that because you'll see growth in them. Right? You, you will see positive forward growth in them. The beautiful thing about Jesus is, is that he never leaves us the way we are, right? He always improves us. He always changes us. He always grows us for the better. So you'll be able to see that in other people. Do they have, uh, do, are they able to express the desire that they want to help others? And so sometimes this sponsor thing can be a little bit tricky, right? It turns out that some sponsors don't want to help people. They want to fix people. They want to dictate to people. They want to boss them around. Run from that kind of a sponsor, right? We, we don't want to have a codependent relationship where, where you, know, you can't decide what color shirt you should wear because you haven't talked to your sponsor, right? We, we don't want that. We, we want you to have someone who can encourage you in the goals that you're trying to reach, but we don't want a codependent relationship. 
Do they show compassion, care, and hope? Right? Will they listen to you? Are they available for you? Or are they too busy? Maybe you've heard this saying, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. Your sponsor should be able to be caring for you in a way that is pretty obvious. Are they a good listener? Are they strong enough to confront your denial or your procrastination in a loving way? And this is an art, not a science. And it's different with every person. I, I think I have five guys that I'm sponsoring, and I would talk to one differently than I would talk to the other, right, on these topics. So does the person that you're looking at, do they have the ability to relate to you about you and not about someone else that they're sponsoring? Do they offer suggestions rather than boss you around? Right? So usually what happens with me is, is I'll, one of my sponsees will call and they'll have a, they'll have a great question and I'll be like, and what do you think? <laughs> Which annoys them every time, right? And I don't do it, don't do it to annoy you guys, I promise. That's not why I'm doing it. But the point is, is I can't always give them the answer, right? I want them to problem solve through. I might offer suggestions of how they can problem solve, but I don't want to be the answer man. They need to be able to come up with their own answers. So do, do, does your sponsor offer suggestions without always being right and without giving orders? And can they share their own struggles with you? Are they willing to share their own weakness with you? Because if they're always right and they don't have any problems, you probably don't want them to be your sponsor because they're probably not working their own recovery. Okay, what is the role of a sponsor? Uh, if you want to just, just real quick, just flip your sheet over. Uh, we're not going to do this now, but I want you to just know that you have that for later. On the back of your sheet, there's a comparison chart of what are the things a sponsor does and what are the things that an accountability partner does. It'll be important for you to review that later before you ask somebody into one of those roles. You'll need to understand what those roles are, but I'm just going to go through them kind of quickly. So a sponsor is like a coach, right? They're going to discuss issues with you that are too great to go into in the open share small group or things that you don't want to talk about in a group, right? Things that you only want to talk to one person about. They're going to be available in times of crisis or potential relapse. Remember, we just read in Ecclesiastes 4 about how two are better off than one. So, like my guys know, right, that, that if they call me, I might not be able to answer. But if they, if they are in a crisis and they text me and say, I'm in a crisis, I'm going to call them. doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm going to call them right away. So, you should have something worked out with your sponsor about if you're in crisis, how do you handle that with them and what does that look like? Uh, will they, are they willing to serve as a sounding board by being objective? Not critical, not judgmental, but objective. And this is super important in principle six, right? In principle six, where you're going to offer your amends and, and ask forgiveness, it's going to be important that you only do that in situations where that's safe. We don't want you to do that in situations where that would be unsafe. And your sponsor is going to be able to help you uh, flesh that out a little bit. They're there to encourage you to work through the principles at your own speed. They'll help you if you get stuck. They'll slow you down if you go too fast. But most important, they're going to model a lifestyle that you want for yourself. They're going to model a lifestyle of recovery that comes from working the steps and principles. Okay. The last section, we're going to land this plane. Uh, oh, and a sponsor can resign or be fired, right? So it's not a lifetime role or anything. Like I could say to my sponsee, this isn't working out or I, you know, whatever. Or they could say, you suck, you're fired. You know, it, <laughs> that's only happened once. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that can't happen. Okay, how do I find a sponsor and or an accountability partner? So here's some rules. First and foremost, the person must be of the same gender. And I've heard every kind of loophole, curveball, you name it. Well, but it's my wife. No, no, no. 
It's my husband. No, no. Has to be the same gender. There's all kinds of reasons for that that I'm happy to share with you if you want to ask. But according to John Baker, I don't have to. It should be obvious, <laughs> right? It should be obvious why that is. Can you relate to the person's story? And this can be super important. Like, I remember when I was trying to find my first sponsor, I asked a guy if he'd be my sponsor. I thought I related to him, and he was like, I've never done meth. I wouldn't know how to talk to you about 30 years of doing meth, so I'm probably not a good fit for you. It broke my little heart because I, I didn't really know how to manage that, but we'll talk about that in just a second. It's okay if someone says no. So I eventually did find somebody who had a story just like mine, and it's going to be important that you find someone that you can relate to. Invest time in fellowship. Come to the dinners, right? Every once in a while, we'll throw a party too, a game night or a barbecue at the park or something. Invest time in fellowship because it's important that you have space to just talk to people normally, that it's not necessarily in a group. And then please don't take a no as a personal rejection. I had to ask four people before I got a yes. Four people. It took me six months each time to work up the courage. I had six months, I asked somebody, nope. Six more months, I asked somebody else. Nope, six more months, I asked. But the sponsor I have now, I've had all the time since then, right? So for five years, he's been my sponsor, and that's been an amazing relationship. Every one of you is going to take the first no personally. I'm just telling you don't, but you will. It'll be okay. Just make sure you ask a second person. And then most important, pray, 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 and ask God to lead you. So the difference between a sponsor and an accountability partner is really basic. You have the long list. I'm just going to give you like three things. The first thing is a sponsor has to have more recovery than you do. They have to have completed uh, a step study group, which is all four participants' guides. Um, and they, um, they have to, uh, I said that, I, what I should have said was they have to have more than a year in recovery, and they have to have completed the four Celebrate Recovery Participants Guides. An accountability partner can have the same amount of recovery as you or less than you. They're going to be somebody who you ask, hey, hold me accountable. If I'm not at the Monday night group, call me and ask me why I wasn't there. Or if I'm, if I'm saying that I'm going to do my Bible every morning, the Bible app with you every morning, and you don't see my note on our study, you're going to call me up and say, hey, what's going on? An accountability partner is someone that you use specifically to hold you accountable. They're like a part of your team where your sponsor is going to coach you. They're going to give you direction. Does that make sense? Okay. We survived the sponsor lesson. Yes. It's the... It's the longest lesson in the book. So I'm going to have a prayer for you, and then we're going to have the worship team uh, come back up and do a closing song. So if, if you just pray with me. Uh, dear God, I just want to thank you for this group of people who are here that want to break out all their hurts, their hang-ups, their habits, and, and they acknowledge that they have been chained by those things and they want to be free. Lord, we just thank you for the leaders that you've provided here at this ministry. We thank you that you love us all. We thank you that you love us right where we're at. Lord, we just pray tonight that you would show us the people that we should ask to be our sponsors or accountability partners. We believe that you've prepared them in advance for us. Help us to establish an honest, honest and loving relationship with them that honors you and helps me and my sponsor grow. Lord, I just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.